Hey guys, this week on This Is Gravel, Bobby has a birthday this Friday. You know what else is this Friday? Sign up for the Big Sugar. Bobby, can you quit watching Disney Plus? I'm trying to find Gravel Guru. Everybody, this is Gravel. I am Bobby Thompson, and with me in the studio is Neil Taylor. Neil, what's been happening in your part of the world? It's really cold in my part of the world. Um, so I've got out on my bike at least once since our last show. Maybe that's how yeah. when was our last show? A couple weeks ago. It was when uh, <laughs> when Steve was here, so that was right before Halloween. So yeah, a couple yeah. weeks. But this is also a really busy time of year for me. Uh, a lot of stuff going on around Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays, and so. I don't traditionally get to ride much in November or December. Those are just two months where the bike kind of sits there and it looks at me every day and it says, Neil, how are you doing? And I wish you'd come sit on me and I just walk away and it's electronic bike have to go. Soon. It does. Yeah, it's an e-bike. It's pretty fancy. <laughs> uh, it might have a motor next yes, year. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. But uh, not, not a lot of getting out. I, I need to get out a little bit more. Um, I'd like to. We have a little bit of a warm up coming here in Emporia over the next few days. So. By the time this show hits the air, I fully plan on getting out and at least getting a few miles in uh, over the weekend. It's been legit cold. Yes. Like teens and 20s for the past couple of days. Yeah. You know, I'm walking outside and it's, I mean, my body hurts and, and I still haven't set up the trainer that I bought a year ago. Um, it's still sitting That's inside a fancy trainer. of the box. So it might, yeah, I know. It was a really fantastic purchase. I'm so glad that I decided to get it <laughs> uh, to collect dust for a year. Wow. But hey, sometimes you make some of those choices. Maybe, though, that's the plan is to get my wife's bike on the trainer so that I can do a little bit of indoor riding. But Just to stay consistent. Yes. Absolutely. So what have you been up to, Bobby? I have been riding a lot of Zwift. And I did ride outdoors a week and a half ago down in Stillwater, Oklahoma for the one night stand. It was mountain bike racing. Um, I, I say racing very loosely. Uh, <laughs> it was a 12 hour event from 7 p.m. until 6 a.m. because we had the time change that night. Yep. Uh, went down last year. Last year was the first, so this is the second year. Always have a blast. And I go down there primarily because it has a gravel feel to it. it we had, you know, two three bonfires that go on campfires that go on all night long and uh um, it's just a great time i usually mentally start shutting down about four and then this year i got an hour of sleep and woke up and um yeah that takes a long time for me to recover anymore yeah so there's a costume contest there's a nameplate contest uh it's just a good time costume contest did you uh dress up I, I I I was the dummy who uh, originated the idea of the costume contest, and yeah, so I felt obligated to put on a costume. <laughs> and let me just say, cheap fifteen dollar bodysuits from Walmart get extremely hot on the inside when you don't dress down and you still have your normal gear on, and then you slide that over the top. I fell down a couple times, which I do every single lap <laughs> when I ride on trails, and. I had, I thought it was blood running down my arm and it was sweat just when I took it off. <laughs> and remember, it's cold. So when I take this off, I'm standing there and it's 40 degrees and I am completely drenched like you had been riding through the rain. Um, it was a bad idea. Uh, next year, I'll, wear, I'll dress up in a bikini and just put that over the top of my regular gear. See? Awesome. There actually was a guy who dressed up in a... <laughs> What you call it, a halter top and the, you know, the, the 70s type shorts, the real snug. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Wasn't couple, alive then. Wrote a couple laps like that. And my goodness. There's some people who can handle the cold a lot better than I can. But um, as we all know, November and December, 
we all start slowing down just a yep. little bit. Um, if I'm outdoors riding, it's in, it's in group rides with friends and it's just chilling. Um, that I still enjoy dressing up warm and going out in group rides. Yeah. I just don't do a lot of, uh, my, you know, stuff that I would do for like daily exercise. Well, and it's tough for us yeah. too. I mean, you know, you mentioned the time change and time change means that there's less daylight after we get off of work. So the group rides pretty much end. We get them occasionally on weekends, but yeah, I don't. I'm again. I don't want to get it all layered up just to go out and ride 15 miles by myself in the dark. In the dark, right? Yeah. Just not any. So fun. a little bit warmer of a place. I'm going to segue here. Oh, yeah. Hey. You like to see uh, doing a little segue? A little bit warmer. Um, although I'm looking at the temps right now, and maybe that's not so true. Is down in Bentonville, Arkansas. Uh, Matt had a chance to go down there recently for the uh, announcing of the the new. Uh, what's that? The Big Sugar Big race? Big Sugar, yeah. Called? Um, had a chance to talk uh, with the directors down there and uh, curious what they have to say. Hey, thanks, Bobby and Neil, for throwing it this way. Today, we are welcoming Gabby and Nat on the show to talk about a brand new event down in Arkansas. How are you guys doing, Gabby and Nat? Good. We're doing great. Good. Glad to have you guys on the show. A couple weeks ago, you guys invited me down to uh, the Bentonville, Arkansas area to talk about a new event, the Big Sugar um, kind of give me an overview of this new event you guys are starting with. Yeah, um, we have a 100-mile course, 107, I guess, Big Sugar, and then Little Sugar will be a 50-mile course uh, with two checkpoints for the Big Sugar um, with some really gnarly gravel, uh, really good scenic canopy-covered stuff. Um, I think it'll be a really good time. Yeah, you know, it was obviously a lot of fun down there that weekend. It was a little little wet on the day we had to go try it out the first time around, but an awesome course. But one thing I have to ask is maybe to start off with, wh why Bentonville? Wh wh why are you guys bringing this new event in down there? You know, a lot of the uh, – we're, we're both new transplants to Bentonville for the same reasons that this area is uh, starting to get on the map, which would be the bike culture piece and the uh, amount of availability of trail access, uh, including – so uh, luckily with Gabby's background and also uh, Thomas, her uh, partner in crimes, uh, they bring a lot of valuable resources uh, in terms of the gravel uh, community straight to Bentonville. So with Gabby and Thomas here now, the area is primed. The Northwest Arkansas zone is uh, ready to expand. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And as much as we talk about this as a first year event and you guys are new as being race directors here, Talk a little bit about the support and kind of the team behind the scenes. I know if you go to the website, it talks a lot about kind of, you know, the DK team and Lifetime obviously being a huge part of this. How is that helpful to you guys down there putting on a first year event? Uh, it's huge. Um, there's no way that out of the gate first year that we'd be able to start an event this big and premier um, without their help. So having them and all their years of experience with Dirty Kanza and everything, has really helped us kind of from year one have a huge event that's going to be um, really pretty quality, great time. Very cool. Obviously, there are a lot of great help with everything here in the gravel scene. When we talk about gravel, you know, a lot of people might be thinking through their mind, oh, Dirty Kanza, Land Run, Gravel Worlds up in Lincoln. All of these places have very different gravel, but that's no different for Bentonville. Kind of walk us through what, what can someone expect out of a 109-mile course? What type of features, what are they going to experience out there? Yeah, it'll be really technical for, I mean, compared to a lot of the courses, like you mentioned, Gravel Worlds and Dirty Kanza. Um, Dirty Kanza definitely has a good amount of kind of techie gravel, but this is just a little bit different. It'll be a lot slower going. Um, there's not going to be a whole lot of race tactics, I guess, like road racing tactics. I don't think there will be many opportunities for people to draft. Um, so I think it's going to be really long and slow for a 100-mile race, um, and it'll definitely be technical um i'm hoping people bring the right tire choice uh <laughs> no 35s maybe get something a little chunkier bring some tire plugs please be set up do lifts. <laughs> yeah nat you come from obviously a mountain bike background how how do you see maybe this and, and some of the pros that were down there this week i think or a couple weeks ago we saw this in um who might you favor in some of these type of deals or the style of rider might you favor? Does this, you know, favor more of the road racer or a mountain biker or what do you see kind of in that role? Well, the, the good thing about this course is it's at the end of the year. So a lot of folks are going to be definitely prepared for it at this point in the game versus some of the, uh, 
uh, or races in the season or events, travel events in the season where you just don't get the time that you need. So I think uh, folks are going to really enjoy the fact that they show up prepared for this in terms of fitness. However, that I think the pieces, Matt, um, that would benefit somebody on this course would be, are they mentally strong? Did they come here to finish the event? And are they prepared for a lot of, like Gabby mentioned, riding by yourself, climbing hills, adventures, uh, and just, just being out there in Mother Nature for, for a day out on the gravel um, with canopy and some different uh, views and landscapes in northwest Arkansas and somewhat into uh, Missouri than you typically see. A lot of canopy, a lot of creek crossings, a lot of uh, descents with uh, some chunkier gravel on it and, and a couple dogs out there as well. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. When we were down there, I mean, just the fall colors are always gorgeous down in the Ozarks in that part of, you know, Missouri, Arkansas. What, what might you say, you know, obviously we're looking at 109 mile and the 50 mile. What what do you see being the difference kind of in these two, obviously, versus half the distance? But what can we expect climbing wise? And, you know, if you only go out and do the 50, are you still going to see the same type of scenery? Are you going to be involved in kind of the same way and come back with just as fulfilling of a weekend? Yeah, for sure. The 50 mile course will definitely not have as much climbing as the 100. Um, and I kind of like that for people that are maybe starting to get into gravel or just looking for something that's kind of a fun, good time and not something that's going to take all day, maybe a little bit longer. Um, the 100 mile course, you're looking probably at about 9,000 feet of climbing. Um, it's a lot of big kind of punchy roller type stuff um, with some switchback type climbs and stuff like that. But um, the little course won't be nearly as challenging in that aspect. There's a few sections that will have some good climbing. Um, you're definitely not on a flat course by any means, but um, I think either way, people will have a really good time with both. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was a fantastic day out there. And uh, some of those creek crossings, you know, where we come from Kansas, you know, we've got so much mud around here and those type of things. You know, out here, the water's crystal clear when you get down there flowing through the rocks and stuff like that. You might have to be careful if you're driving around though and not get stuck like we did. But uh, overall, it was a fantastic day out there. Uh, you can ask Leland about us getting stuck. But uh, speaking of the mud, that's not something you have to worry about. You know, talk about maybe how this course can handle all types of weather out there, especially kind of in the fall season. Yeah, for sure. It's really, there's not a ton of soil. Um, it's mostly really rock. Um, and that's why it's so sharp and that's why, um, tire choice is going to be key, but not for the same reason that like a lot of races where you're, you know, last minute kind of looking at the rain, um, just making sure that you don't need to switch to a skinnier tire. This, you want something kind of beefier. Um, there's really no issues with like peanut butter mud caking up or anything like that. Um, just a lot of water crossings and it does super well with rain. Real quick before we kind of get in the who, what, when, where, and how people can get registered, where does the name Big Sugar come from? How did, how did that get started? And kind of talk to us a little bit about maybe how the origin of this event and why it became an event. Yeah, so Big Sugar is a um, larger river that's kind of nearby. It goes through Missouri, and you're actually riding along it for a lot of the course. Um, and then Little Sugar is an offshoot of Big Sugar that actually um, you come into Bentonville at the end of the day, no matter which course you're on, um, and you'll be following the Little Sugar Creek. So um, geographically, you're kind of along both of those um, water systems for a lot of the course. So it's pretty neat that we could kind of tie that into kind of more of the story. Okay. And kind of the one thing everybody's waiting for, how do, how do people get registered? When do they need to get registered? And when is this event? One, one cool thing about the event, Matt, is that it's tied in with Outer Bike. And Outer Bike is a uh, consumer outdoor event where you can participate or you can bring your family and uh, you can check out the scene. You can demo bikes. Uh, next year, there will be gravel bikes in addition uh, for people to check out. So there's a lot going on in uh, Bentonville or in Northwest Arkansas during the weekend for families, for activities, for folks. But uh, two events in one, kind of, you can check out uh, all the latest, greatest products and also get to ride some of it uh, and come back and celebrate with friends. Yeah, that's absolutely a good point. Thanks for bringing up Outer Bike. This year, you know, we walked through there and it was an absolute blast just seeing all of the industries in, in so many different places there. 
Um, you know, it's just it's just cool to be around that many like-minded cycling folks. So, when can people expect to you know book the hotel rooms down in Bentonville and get headed down there next year? Yeah, so um, the race will actually be on October twenty fourth, twenty twenty. Um, but I think registration will have opened up Thursday and Friday before. So it's a good opportunity to come a couple days early and check out an area that maybe you wanted to check out anyway and bring your family and scope out some of the museums. There's Crystal Bridges and the Anasium and all kinds of good restaurants and good riding outside of gravel too. So if you want to bring a couple different bikes, it's always a good time. Yeah, it was absolutely a, a good time riding through there. On Sunday, the day after kind of the demo event, Gabby and I rode around in Thomas and a few people and uh, just, just kind of took over and checked out the town. It was my first time being down there. And, and it was just amazing just to check in the culture that goes on there in Bentonville. So this weekend, though, marks an important date in this event, and that's registration. Tell us a little bit about that process and what people need to do. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think there's a link on the Big Sugar website. Um, pull that up Friday morning. Um, I think registration opens up right at 8 a.m. Go ahead and be ready. I don't know how fast this thing is going to fill up, but it's always good to be safe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so on Friday when the registration opens up, there are the two course options that you can do. And, and we kind of as race directors think that they're – they're both equally going to be sought after. Um, it is uh, it is later in the year, and there's multiple options, and it's a new course. So there could be folks doing the shorter option just for expiration, uh, or you never know. So we do feel there's quite a, a lot of questions going around and demand, and a lot of people are very interested. So we feel that registration is uh, kind of key to get uh, at least uh, into the system that day once registration opens up. Lifetime has done a, a great job of, coming to the area, doing the homework, and with the DK crew and Gabby and I here in town, uh, we feel like we've got the infrastructure set up for the floodgates to open, starting uh, registration opening day. Yeah. Very cool. And the links to the registration and the website to find out more information on Big Sugar will be in the show notes below. Real quick before I let you go, Gabby and Nat, wh what is the thing that each of you are most excited about with launching a brand new event? I'm really excited to show people this area and like there's so much trail and there's so much good things here, but um, the gravel here is one of those things that I think is just waiting to be seen and a lot of people are going to be really excited about it. About mile 77 or so, you're going to be rolling into a pretty sweet surprise. So I'm excited for everybody to kind of check that out. Yeah, I think, Matt, you and a couple folks got a sneak peek at uh, some of the goodness out on the course. But the course is spectacular. The venue itself lends it to uh, a lot of exploring. So I think once folks uh, come do one ride, they're going to want to come back for more. So we're excited to uh, take folks out and introduce them to gravel culture here in northwest Arkansas. Yeah, I expect an absolutely great weekend from it. I can't wait to get down there and get on the bike, maybe even this spring and check out some of that area before the event come October 24th. I want to thank you both for being on the show here today with us. Uh, always keep us updated on what's going on down there in Northwest Arkansas. Thanks again. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. It's an awesome interview there, Matt. I, re I appreciate you talking to him down there. Uh, great people, Nat and Gabby. Great location down in Bentonville. A lot of climbing, uh, a lot of elevation changes, and couple of distance choices yeah and that distance choice probably for me is going to be about 50 that's about all i want i don't think i want in october any more than that uh, but i think it's gonna be a fun time good time to get together with the gravel family once again before we all get ready to head off to land run in march and yeah because so, it's not like we have facebook to keep in contact or anything during what's the land, facebook but... <laughs> sorry quit doing that a while ago uh, i'm glad but you can catch me on instagram uh speaking of social medias though I think Matt always has some social media ready for us about this time of the show. Hey, thanks, Bobby and Neil. Social media time, my absolutely favorite time of the show here on Gravel Guru. You know, since Bobby's birthday is coming up on Friday, November 15th, let's just show a photo of this costume down he had at uh, One Night Stand in Stillwater. Happy birthday to you this week, Bobby. Next up, we've got Greg Wall out on Saturday in northwest Arkansas riding gravel. Corby was out riding in the Wheeler National Wildlife Refuge in Decatur, Alabama. Shane was out riding the Mississippi River Hills near Apple Creek, Missouri. Kate was out bikepacking in Mark Twain National Forest over in Missouri. 
William got in about 30 miles in central Oklahoma. Ryan got out and did a little over a 150-mile gravel ride with some friends departing from Marysville, Kansas on the Blue Standing Bear and Homestead Rails Trail Saturday. Greg was out appreciating the fall weather in central Iowa, said it started to snow Monday there. Jason and Wendy Shearer were out at the Spirit World 100 in Patagonia, Arizona. What an awesome time that first year event looked like out there at the cyclist menu. Amy was out last Sunday with friends out in Dwight, Kansas, doing a 32-mile loop. Kenneth was out riding the Diamond Bluff Bonanza gravel race near Greer's Ferry Lake, Arkansas. Awesome time, Kenneth. Sue was out riding the Freedom Fest here in Emporia, Kansas. We are the founding city of Veterans Day, something to truly be proud of here in Emporia. And finally, we've got Tyler out riding a gravel loop in Gasper County, Iowa. Thank you to everybody that submitted social media. Make sure you're hashtagging things. This is gravel. Back to you, Bobby and Neil. Awesome, guys. Thanks for that social media. We love it. Make sure to keep sending that in, tagging it with This is Gravel. Also, don't forget, Friday, November 15th, sign up for the Big Sugar. I uh, look forward to seeing you all down there. That's all I got. Bye.